Hey guys, welcome back to The Foolish Show. Of course, I am a foolish Phil. I just wanted to give you a few more tidbits, a little bit more of my thoughts as the Frankie Collins story, his transfer portal, his leaving Michigan is becoming a little bit more um, in the light. We're getting more details. In fact, um, yesterday or maybe it was this morning, the M Live had an interview with Martelli, obviously the assistant coach on Michigan, about Frankie Collins leaving. And Frankie Collins, of course, today came out on social media saying he was traveling, he's transferring, I should say, to Arizona State. And I think Michigan has a high likelihood of playing Arizona State in some early tournament like November 15, 16. There, Michigan and Arizona State are two of the four teams in that, so maybe they'll play, maybe they won't. Anyways, I found the article to be enlightening and... I, I like to have a better understanding of what actually happened. So if you didn't read the article, it's on MLive.com. Just a few highlights here. One thing was that Frankie Collins and his family, his camp of friends, were upset that Michigan had pursued Doug McDaniel, and the backup point guard, and they didn't like that fact. I think that's a big red flag that the guy doesn't want competition. I mean, this is college basketball. You need to have more than one point guard because what happens? People get injured, right? Just look, Devontae Jones got injured and who had, who had to step up? Frankie Collins. If you didn't have a backup point guard, what are you going to do in those situations? So I find that a little odd. Last year, when Devontae Jones was transferring to Michigan and they asked Frankie Collins what he thought about it, Frankie Collins said, oh man, let's all go all in for the competition. But maybe that was just a public thing to say the right things in the papers because apparently competition's not what he wanted here. Another interesting tidbit Martelli said was that they told Collins that Llewellyn was going to come in and that if he did, Llewellyn was coming in as more of a point guard than a shooting guard. When I was watching his videos, I saw him more as a shooting guard. But according to Martelli and the staff, they see him as a point guard who can play the shooting guard, but he's going to basically be the point guard. So obviously you can see how that happened. A couple days before the transfer window closed, Llewellyn came into Michigan. He announced it officially. I wonder when he was actually going to announce it because I think the news broke and then he even made a social media tweet thing or someone said, well, I wasn't going to announce it yet, but now that people know, I'll announce it. I wonder when he was going to actually announce it because... If he would have waited till the transfer portal window closed, I mean, obviously players can still transfer, but now they have to sit out a full, I think it is, might even be a full year before they can play again in fall sports. It was like May 1. So if you waited till May 2, you had to wait all the way around the calendar, as I understand it. You couldn't play this fall. You would have to wait till 2023, the fall of that year. So at least for Frankie Cowan's sake, Llewellyn did make it public. Again, was it on purpose that it leaked out would be a great question to know the answer to. Because maybe Llewellyn and Michigan did not want it to get out. Kind of, if you will, hand-tying Frankie Collins in that way. Perhaps. We won't know. Because it would look terrible if Michigan actually did that and like it was public. Like, oh, we were just not going to say it so that we could, you know, he couldn't transfer. That would be a terrible look. Knowing what Juwan Howard is a pretty honest guy, I don't think they would do that to him, especially if Frankie Collins was one of his recruits. So I don't think Michigan would go down that way. Well, you got speculation there. Anyways, Martelli said, continued on, that they view Llewellyn basically as an upgrade over Frankie Collins. Obviously, he can shoot the ball better. He might not be as good of a defender, right? That's obviously true. Frankie Collins was a very physical, aggressive defender, and Llewellyn, I don't know if he has that in him or not. It's always going to be interesting to see the Ivy League versus the Big Ten. It obviously took Devontae Jones a while to get used to the Big Ten. He really rounded into form as the Big Ten season went along, but it took a while. It wasn't just like he was ready to go. And Obviously, Michigan also like gave their public support for Cowens, like saying we want what's best for him. Again, what do you expect Martelli to do? Say we wish him the best, we can't wait to mop the floor with him. They're not going to say that. There's no positive to say that publicly, right? Whether, whatever. 
And so I just found that interesting, though, that a few little tidbits there. It's on M Live if you want to read it about Frankie Cowan's leaving. Apparently, he didn't like Michigan recruiting point guards, was not happy when Llewellyn was recruited, and that was like what broke it, and he transferred out. Again, for his sake, good thing Llewellyn made it official, official, and then he left from there. Also, it leaves in the mind um, a few more things, little tidbits about Michigan. Uh, Diabate was chosen to go to the NBA Combine, and that is only the top 60 prospects are invited to that. And so obviously that's like the two deep on the draft board about. So it's most likely that some team will probably fall in love with his athletic gifts and will sign him to at least a G League contract. And I have no problem with that, man. You can't, you can't get the NIL money because he's French and the visa and all that stuff in college. So, man, go to the pros and just work on your game for a straight one to two years and see what happens. I mean, just look at Jordan Poole. He was a great player in college, but he could have developed more in college. He didn't. He left. Maybe he was the straw that broke Beeline's back of college basketball. I don't know. But he left, and what did he do? He spent a year basically in the G League, and then the next year he's flourishing with Golden State. So, you know, going to the G League, getting money, getting honing your skills – Working with pro teams, scouts, and all that is not the worst thing in the world. Whereas uh, Caleb Houston has not made any official announcements, so there's speculation that maybe he was invited to the G League uh, Combine, which would be like the top 100 recruits. I don't know if that's the top 100 that are not the top 60. Because if I was, if I was picked to go to the NBA Combine or the G League Combine, I'm going to go to the NBA Combine. So that, I don't know if this is the next 100 players or what. Just coincidentally, I saw on the big board projection that Diabate sorry, was projected as a 50th um, best player on, on one board, and they had Houston as the 54th best recruit or player prospect. So it'll be interesting if Houston comes back. I think the longer this goes, I really think that Diabate is not going to come back. There's a stronger chance now that Houston doesn't. I still think Houston comes back. But if one doesn't go, then Michigan really needs to bring in another player, obviously from the transfer portal. Maybe there'll be some players available who, you know, were going to go for the NBA and didn't make it, and then they have their eligibility back. And so you have that pool of players you might be able to get in. Of course, we know Michigan's admissions. You're basically going to have to go for a grad transfer because, no, as long, unless you don't care about you getting your degree, then Michigan will like throw away half your credits. So if you actually want to get your degree, you cannot really finish it at Michigan, transferring in. It's going to take way too long. So that's why Michigan always has to go for like grad transfers, basically. Or someone who might just be like a one and done and be like, I don't care what my degree is. I'll take underwater basket weaving for five semesters in a row. What do I care? You might have a player like that, too. Anyways, little Michigan update. If you have any thoughts on this, Frankie Cowens, the little bit of tidbits we got out of that situation, Diabate and Houston in the draft, put them in the comment section below. I'll try to respond as I'm able to. Again, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please hit the like. If you really like it, hit that subscribe. And thanks again for watching all the way to the end. All right, until I see you guys next time, as always, go blue.